Silver has a mining problem. According to the Silver Institute, silver supply comes from four main sources. Mine production, recycling, net hedging, supply, and official sector sales. Of these, mining production is by far the most significant, yet it's steadily declining year after year, even as demand rises. Today we're diving into why silver mining supply isn't keeping up with demand, despite higher prices, and what this could mean for the future of the market. Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe and support the channel. Thank you. Silver is used in many industries and is vital to our everyday lives. Its properties as an antibacterial and antimicrobial metal make it invaluable in the medical field. Silver's electrical and thermal conductivities are the highest of any known contact material, making it indispensable for the energy industry. It's the world's most reflective metal, reflecting 95% of light. The list goes on. As the world changes, silver's many unique properties are making it one of the most sought-after commodities across the globe. Demand for silver has increased sharply since 2020, leading many investors to predict future supply shocks and shortages. Years of surpluses have built up above-ground silver stocks extensively, so much so that silver demand has not yet caused a breakdown in the supply chains, which would inevitably lead to a repricing. But the mining problem remains a cause for concern. We mentioned at the start of this video there are four categories of supply according to the Silver Institute. But for physical silver, only two of those categories really matter. Mining production and recycling. Net hedging supply is a bit of a misnomer. It really only applies to silver futures and does not represent silver that has been pulled out of the ground yet. And for net official sector sales? That's referring to entities like governments and central banks. In 2023, this category represented 0.15% of total silver supply, making it negligible when measuring available silver stocks. Mining supply has made up between 82% and 86% of the total silver supply since 2015. But over the years, we have witnessed the number of ounces mined steadily decline. Nearly 900 million ounces were mined in 2015 and 2016, yet the past few years the number of ounces mined has dropped by 60 to 70 million ounces. In 2023 we only mined 830 million ounces. This was not an outlier. Silver mining output has been dropping steadily since 2016. There has been a sustained deficit in global silver markets since 2019 as demand has risen while supply has tightened. In response, the price of silver has essentially doubled from roughly $15 per troy ounce in 2019 to over $30 today. But while we would normally expect supply to rise in response to a commodity doubling in price, there are two problems facing miners today preventing silver extraction from increasing. The first issue is that primary silver mines are few in number. Silver comes from two types of mines. It either comes from a primary mine where silver is the main metal that miners dig up, or as a byproduct from mines that are focused on extracting copper, zinc, and gold. The silver coming out of these mines is secondary to the main metal they are producing. And byproduct mines are said to account for as much as 80% of the global supply of silver. There are reportedly 757 silver mines in production today, but only a few dozen are primary silver mines. Because silver is the byproduct of mines for metals like copper and gold, it means that a change in the spot price of silver will have little effect on supply. Increasing production and bringing new mines online is a large, costly, and time-consuming endeavor. Miners will focus on the primary metal and not the byproduct when considering starting a new mine, or increasing the rate of extraction. This means production of silver will be influenced by the markets of copper, gold, and zinc. And this gets to the heart of the second problem in silver mining. You may wonder why more silver primary mines aren't coming online in the face of sustained record demand. An analysis of 127 mines found that it takes nearly 16 years from discovery of the deposits until the day ore can be extracted and a mine becomes productive. 
The process of bringing a silver mine from prospecting to operational status is long and complex. It begins with prospecting and exploration where geologists identify areas with potential silver deposits. Once a discovery is made, companies conduct feasibility studies to assess the economic and environmental viability of the deposit and seek permits from regulatory authorities. This is followed by securing financing for the costly development process. The next phase is mine construction, involving building infrastructure like roads, processing plants, and waste management facilities. Finally, the mine enters the production ramp-up phase, gradually increasing output as it becomes fully operational. Analysts have noted that the number of silver deposits in the world that could make up primary silver mines are limited. For years, prospecting and exploration efforts have yielded little fruit, but last year a new discovery put an unlikely country on the map with the discovery of a gigantic silver reserve, valued at over $127 billion. China, Mexico, and Australia are all playing second fiddle to Poland. Over 170,000 tons of silver sits beneath the striking landscapes of this European country, making it the leading nation in the world in terms of untapped silver reserves. But while Poland is sitting on a veritable treasure trove, output from mining operations is modest. It's reported that Poland only extracted 1,300 tons of silver last year. But some of the numbers we've shared today explain why Poland is not digging out more. It will be years before Poland is able to begin ramping up operations to mine more silver, making any additions to the global silver supply a prospect for the far-off future. Local regulations, mine management, and to an extent culture will determine when these new silver deposits will reach the surface. The dual challenge facing silver supplies around the world, a limited number of primary mines, the amount of time it takes new mines to come online, mean that supply deficits are likely to continue for a number of years. And that's where we stand today. A global silver market facing a supply crunch, driven by limited primary mines and the long, complex process of bringing new mining operations online. Even with new discoveries like Poland's massive reserves, the world is unlikely to see a significant boost in silver production anytime soon. As demand continues to rise, the supply deficit we've witnessed over the past few years may become the new normal for the foreseeable future. For investors and industries alike, this imbalance could lead to even greater volatility in the silver market. And that's all we have for you today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.